Welcome to another episode of Silence is Golden. My name is Troy Dean. And I'm Simon Kelly. Coming up on today's show, we're going to be talking about a content-first approach to designing websites, care of our friends at A List Apart. We'll show you another alternative to the design tool Canva. Uh, and primarily, we're going to be talking about how to sell discovery sessions to your clients, so, which is one of my favourite topics, so that you can get paid for the work that you do. Stay with us. Well, it's good to be back. How are you, mate? Good, man. How are you? Very good. Very good indeed. Um, we've also got coming up, um, WordCamp Sydney have uh, finalised their dates and are putting a call out for speakers and sponsors. There's also some uh, stuff from Freelancers Union about the beauty of being perfectly imperfect as a freelancer. And uh, we're also going to dive into what really pisses me off this week, um, which I'm very, very irate about, uh, which we'll get to a little bit later on. What's been going on in your world this week, dude? Well, You've been in Bris Vegas, right? I have, yeah, yeah. Cooking your mum a roast. Yeah, it was True awesome. Story. I found this, yeah, I nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. So definitely... Um, what meat was it? Lamb. Lamb, which, roast lamb. Which I actually... Cruise. I actually thought at some point earlier this year, I was like, you know what? Like, we don't need to eat lamb because it's like, it's a bit awful. And then I, have, I haven't eaten as much lamb in my life as since I right. made that declaration. I was like, right, no more lamb. Right. And it just became more and more delicious. What, what, what is it awful about it? Because it's a baby well, sheep? Is yeah, it? that's right. the thing. Yeah, right. yeah, but it tastes so good. Mm. So, yeah. Controversial. Um, <laughs> very controversial. <laughs> Morals and deliciousness. I'm gonna, <laughs> look, I'm an omnivore. I'll eat, I'll eat anything. So, mm, fair um, enough. I'm, you know, I'll... You know, I have no real dilemma with, um, except cow. I don't eat a lot of cow. Big, stupid, slow animal. Oh, not, much go, not much going for it, really. I prefer kangaroo. You have to insult it and then not eat it. Well, you know, I mean, look at a cow. Kangaroo's great, isn't it? Look at a cow. It's big. It's a bit docile. Doesn't move very far. You are it, what you eat? Is that it, what you're that thinking? It, correct. Absolutely right. And it goes, <laughs> mm, yeah. you know, I'd rather eat a kangaroo. Something Lean, a bit faster. Agile, yep. skipping about the place, you Can know. Box you, knock your head off. Correct. If you want to. I had a meditation teacher once say to me, um, the reason that he doesn't eat meat is because he doesn't want to ingest the consciousness of another animal. Fair and enough. it was about that time I stopped eating cow because mm. I thought about it and went, yep, yeah, you're right. But yeah. uh, happy to eat kangaroo, happy to eat lamb, happy to eat chicken and fish, just not much cow. Um, anyway, we <laughs> should have a look at what's been going on in the WordPress space over the last seven days. Let's do this. Stop. 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 Hit, so, us, hit yeah. us up, Simon. So kicking things off, we had an article from um, a list apart about priority guides, a content first alternative to wireframes, which I really, really like this article. There's quite a lot of content in there. It's about putting together something that has the real content from your clients, even when you're in the prototyping wireframing process. That's a radical idea. I know. Instead of just putting in lorem ipsum or just things that could go in their placeholders, when you're working with the actual content and you're you're guiding, uh, this will be a headline, this will be a select box, and these kind of things will go in there. When you're getting a bit more specific, especially when you're doing like some more like functional application style websites and not just like brochure websites, mm. you're doing things like flight trackers or something like that. Mm. You want to actually get further along in the process before you you know put the the development mm. team onto it mm. so they go through quite a quite a good process in order to um to be able to do that without needing to put mm. put the code into the machine mm. yeah which is attention great. ladies and gentlemen flight xyz is 45 minutes delayed into lorem ipsum here in <laughs> uh in alphabet city that's not really the kind of thing that we want to be i mean it should be no. called death to lorem ipsum shouldn't it mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So, great article. Uh, have a look and you can see more of the details in the process You know, there. I have actually had clients say to me in the past, when we've used Lorem Ipsum, I've actually had clients say to me in the past, oh, I think, you've, I think this is wrong. I think mm. you've translated this into Italian. Mm. What's, what's going on? Yeah. I, seriously, I kid you not. I'm not making this up. I couldn't yeah. make this so up. Who's the expert here? We're putting the Italian on. That's okay? right. We're leaving it there. We've okay. decided your, okay. target ma your target market are Italian and we're going to communicate yep. with them using Lorem Ipsum. You know you're winning the game when you can actually do that and the client signs off. You're yep. like, just kidding, just kidding. Right. Thanks for the final <laughs> deposit. But actually, uh, it was all just an April Fool's joke. It's just placeholder. Uh, quick, check, content. Quick, quick check in on Facebook here. Rich Flynn, Rich Flynn says, hey guys. Hey Rich, I think we've got a coaching call coming up, haven't we Rich? Because I think you won one recently and I think you and I are going to have a chat very soon. I think it might even be coming up this week. And Colleen Gratzer says, my husband has tried Wagyu and Kangaroo. Hopefully not in the same burger. Yeah, wow. Because that would be 
which is amazing. <laughs> I think it'd be weird. Mm. Ka yeah. Kangaroo is a very sweet meat. Yeah, mm. it is. It's good. Yeah. Kangaroo is delicious. It is. Kangaroo yeah. is beautiful. Wagyu is also delicious. Also, a, mm. a tool that I've been trying out recently is called Crello, and it's just because I'm, you know, just easily distracted by shiny objects, which is great because on this show we get to talk about Tool of the Week and news, so it's like yeah. part of my job now, it is which is amazing. So you can't get distracted, you pay attention, just listen to what we're saying, what is and the, that's it. What is the difference between, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of these tools now that do this specific thing, yeah. right? There's Canva, mm -hmm. which does it really well, we mm -hmm. know it, we love it, we use it. Mm -hmm. um, there's also um, another one that's part of the AppSumo briefcase. AppSumo briefcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't which what it's I called. also have, of course. Not Can't the, what's it's called. Yeah, um, yeah. So why is what's Crello any different? What is the different? I mean, what is the what's the differentiator here? Mm. Is so, it just doing the same thing? So this one specializes in uh, in social media. Where right. Canva has a section for social media for mm. sure, but it's doing blog posts, it's doing A4 business. Mm. Um, there's letterheads. It does a lot, and it's great. But uh, like I think it's just adding some more competition to the market. Right. But I think yeah, Crello is good. Really easy to use. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I quite enjoy it. One thing it's got that a lot can, of templates. One it thing that really Canva well. doesn't do mm. is it doesn't allow you to produce a say for example a Facebook post and then automatically convert it into square for Instagram, slightly different size for Twitter, slightly different size for LinkedIn, slightly different size for Pinterest, because mm. all these frickin' networks have their own, you know, optimal best practice sizes. Yep. Canva doesn't do that. Does Crello do something like that? Well, the premium version does of oh. Canva. Oh, yeah. oh, does it? So it has resize and it's got a crown and you click that and it's like, would you like to upgrade, blah, 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 upsell? Whole team have to upgrade to that. Right. And then resizing, but it doesn't format it for you. Right. So it'll resize it and then you have to move the stuff around. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Um, um, Crello, Crello <coughs> does do that. Okay. Yeah. Very good. I don't well. know this because I don't do this in the business anymore, uh, which is a whole other conversation we can have at another time. Yeah. But is it um, stencil. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Stencil mm. is the one that's part of the briefcase um, deal from AppSumo. Anyway, let's move on. Um, what else is going on? So Sydney. Uh, yeah. WordCamp. Yes, Go very on. exciting. Tell us all about it. Yep, so I actually thought this was, I don't know, it's 2018. I thought it was 2019. There you go. WorkCamp Sydney will be on 28th to 29th of July 2018, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is coming up. At the University of Technology in Sydney. Uh, we were there a couple of years ago. WP Elevation sponsored it. Mm. And we spoke. Not sure if I'm going this year. I'm sure someone from WP Elevation will be there this year, but I'm not sure that I'm actually going to be there because we've got a truckload of international travel coming up over the coming months going to the Philippines, going to the States. Awesome. Um, it's very exciting indeed. So yeah, I'm not sure absolutely. if I'm going to go, but um, I'm sure someone will be there. Yeah, yeah. if I'm around, I'm 100% going to go to that. I think, yeah, I spoke at the I spoke at the one that you were talking about, actually, on Digital Marketing you Funnels. Did, that's right. Yeah, I'm, that was I, the first time that I'd spoke at a WordCamp before. I was there, rolling Jaffas down the aisle. Nice. And throwing tomatoes at you, but <laughs> I was right at the back, so they didn't reach. Yeah, yeah. They just, just landed in on front. Peter Mead's head <laughs> in front. Unfortunately, in fact, I don't even know if Peter was there, but um, uh, uh, Jeffrey <laughs> but like Marbury says, I keep missing this. Nice to see you live. Connor says, hello from Ireland. Corey Hind, uh, hey, Corey, says Canva is surely the market leader. It would have to be quite impressive to knock them off. And Colleen says, I just started using Trello to start tracking my podcast topics and who I've assigned for interviews. And that's nice, Colleen, but we were actually talking about Corello, not Trello. We were talking about Crello, spelled with a C. Uh, but Trello is very good also for project management. There you go. Just throw it in there. Yeah. Uh, another article that came across from Freelancers Union, which also they have great content for freelancers. Uh, it's about the, the beauty of being a perfectly imperfect freelancer. Uh, and some of the, the key topics they talk about there are, are having, having the great expectations that you've got of yourself mm -hmm. as well and what you, you know, your expectations that you need to deliver with sales, marketing, client relationships and the billion other things you've got. Uh, and you know that patience in your business really pays off. It's a good, it's a good quality to have. It's not all about getting, building an agency in three months or getting to where you want in in a month and building that recurring revenue as quickly as you possibly can. It's about being patient. It's about putting, you know, each brick in the right spot every day. The more you work on the business, uh, and it, being more comfortable going your own way, like doing what it is that you want to do and being cool with that. Not always looking at all the different companies, all different freelancers, agencies, whatever, and just you know copying their pricing basically or thinking that's what you need to. It's like going down your own path of you, know, you being in your sweet spot and delivering value to your customers. 
And they offer a couple of strategies for success there as well. So that's a great article to take a look at. Uh, David Kadavi, <coughs> who was on the podcast back in, well, the early days, uh, he uh, wrote this article on um, Lifehacker, or he was referenced in this article on Lifehacker. Uh, but this all kind of goes back to a video um, from Ira Glass, the host of This American Life, which is basically advice for beginners. And the advice is that you have to give yourself permission to suck. Mm. Because the first time you do something, you will suck at it. And it's only through practice that you get better. Mm. Uh, most people don't start or don't ship or don't hit the publish button or don't you know, take something to market because they are afraid that they're going to be laughed at or ostracized or, look, or they're going to look foolish because they haven't given themselves permission to suck. Let me give you a very practical little tip here. My buddy um, Bart is coming in to help us redesign the audio routing in this studio so that we can get better signaling between us and the producers and stuff as we grow and expand here. And uh, he knows that we're big fans of doing everything live uh, and being completely transparent because that's just, the, I believe the best way to learn is just to tell your audience, hey, we're figuring this out, it's an iteration, help us. And Bart said, um, do you, you know, can we practice this before we go live? Do you have like some way we can practice this before we go live? And I said, oh yeah, of course. We have a private Facebook group called Experiments where there's no one in there except us. So we can do whatever we want in there and we can actually live stream it into Facebook and we can watch the recording back. So we set that up as a security net, if you like, as a safety net. That, so we basically, that's how we give ourselves permission to suck. We, we can do anything in that Facebook group and no one else is gonna see it and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter uh, because if you are plugging things in and you do go live and in a private Facebook group rather than, um, I hope that um, makes sense. Wow, that yeah. was like, <coughs> that was one of the most insightful things you've ever said. There you go. Um, so give yourself permission to suck. Mm. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, Max, we were just talking about this off camera before. Actually, we were talking about how Max wouldn't have jumped into the into the hot seat and and done this and got the the exhilaration from actually being on the controls there mm. if he didn't give him p himself permission yeah. to just go. I might not be that good at this. Yeah. And the first thing that That's I think right. that he did as well was put, Jin put up called me, called me Jin McInerney. There we go. Look at that. Max is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Bam! He's come a long way. Look at that. Fantastic. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So during <clears throat> the last week, anything that uh, anything was a little little annoying? Oh, you want to you want to you want to talk about what got under my skin this week? Yeah. Tell me about it. Let's do it. This pisses me off. So what really pisses me off this week is, um, is, is consultants or service providers or even product manufacturers not delivering on their promise. We hire a lot of consultants here in the business uh, and what happens is you go to a website and you drink the Kool-Aid, you read their blog post, maybe you read their book, you hear them on a podcast or whatever it is. And I, I just gotta say, most of the time everything works out fine, but sometimes, you have a look at their website and you say, okay, well, this is the service I need from you guys. I'm happy to pony up and pay the money. These are the deliverables that I'm expecting. I'm a little bit OCD. I normally take a screenshot of that and stick it in Asana and go, okay, these are the things we're gonna check off to make sure we get. Sometimes, three months into that plan with that consultant, no deliverables. Where's the thing that you promised us? Where's the report? Where's this thing? It, that, that is just not acceptable, right? Absolutely not acceptable. If you as a WordPress consultant are offering plans on your website for maintenance or care or strategy or coaching or consulting, it is your job to make sure you deliver those things to your client. Don't make your client come looking for it. That is a bad customer experience. From a product point of view, we bought some Logitech Brio 4K USB cameras, which are beautiful when they work. However, with the current version of the Mac operating system, there's a bug, which means that the, uh, f the far left-hand side of the screen, about 5% of the far left-hand side of the screen is actually a duplicate of the right-hand side of the screen. It's a known bug. It's been a known issue for months. There are hundreds of Logitech customers complaining about it in the forums, and Logitech haven't fixed it, and they can't give us an ETA on when the fix is coming out. So my request for Logitech is, give us a freaking refund or fix the bloody thing. Deliver on your promise. That's what pisses me off this week. 
Cute red Ooh. light off. Look at that. Max is all over this like a fat kid on a cupcake, isn't he? <laughs> hey? that's, I know that's politically incorrect and inappropriate. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's funny. Um, <coughs> but it's also funny. It so is also I mean, funny. Like, there that's you go. right. So you, you've got to weigh it up. <laughs> Lamb deliciousness. Yep. Fat kid politically Steve, incorrect. Steve, what do you do? Steve Little says, Max has the red light of anger on. That's right. And uh, Colleen Gratzer says, it reminds me of Go Your Own Way uh, by Fleetwood Mac. I think she was talking about the freelancer article there. Oh, right. Cool. Uh, so, good. <coughs> you know, looking into the into the community there, we did have a few questions. So let's help some people get unstuck. Let's get unstuck. So this week's question comes from our uh, our community in WP Elevation. Uh, this one comes from Joshua Howell. Mm. Joshua says, "I'm not yet confident on trying to sell a discovery session." Uh, because it feels like the client should get some kind of written product delivered at the end so they can see a tangible result. I guess you could record the session and then deliver either a transcription or a copy of the audio file. So, Joshua, with that, like we're going to, um, the previous episode, we did talk about having the, uh, the discovery workshop, the strategy session deliverable, which you then, during the, the session, you actually take notes or get your client to take notes, which is even better than you trying to take them yourself while you're trying to run it. And then you compile the notes at the end and you give that to them as the deliverable, as a PDF. Um, I know Christina Romero also talks about doing a, um, uh, transcribing it as well because she usually delivers them via Skype or via Zoom mm -hmm. and then gets those transcribed at rev.com, I believe. So that is the deliverable that you can actually put together at the end. Uh, there's also another discovery workshop that I do as well, which is um, to be able to get deeper into the features mm -hmm. as well of a, um, of, a, of a website before we get started, and that's the prototype. Mm -hmm. So there's multiple types of deliverables that you can have as part of the discovery. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I think you should definitely go ahead and do that, Josh. Yeah, I like the idea of the prototype. Uh, just, just a little sidebar. The WordPress Easter egg. See what I did there? Little sidebar. Um, if you can get someone amazing, oh, super <laughs> nerd. If you can get someone within the client's organisation to be the scribe and fill in the workbook during the, that discovery uh, workshop, that will make your life easier. So oh, you yeah. can just facilitate the conversation and not worry about making the notes. Uh, also, if they, you can get them to write their words, there's more ownership rather than you uh, dictating the language. Um, the prototype is a great deliverable. I also like a site map as a deliverable. If you can kind of map out the information architecture mm. during that workshop and then present them with a beautiful looking side map, maybe use something like, um, what is it? Is it Slick, slick map? Site Map? Yes, yeah, slick, yeah. slick Site Map, uh, one of those tools um, to um, show them map. something visual. Because yeah. what happens is when they see a site map, they're like, oh, that's how all the pages <laughs> are going to fit together. And that's how the blog categories fit together. Oh, I can't wait to actually see it. And you go, great, approve the proposal and we'll build the bloody thing. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a um, an appetite wetter. Mm, definitely. Mm. And it helps to make sure they've approved something and they kind of can't just go back all the time. That's right. Yeah, so they've approved, signed off on something. Yeah. Um, so Slick Map, and then there's Flow Map. Uh, yeah, Flow Map is yeah, our yeah. new favorite one uh, with a double P, F L O W M A double P, because they have now also just released User Flows, it's still in beta, but we have access to it. And User <laughs> Flows basically, Flow Map allows you to draw up a site map. But user flows allow you to draw in user actions in between the pages. Mm, my God. So mm. you can map out a funnel? Correct. Ooh, and you like can map out, you know, um, here is the page. Does customer sign up? Yes, go to this page. No, remarketing Facebook. And you can yeah, draw the thing unreal. visually to get everyone on the same page. Yeah, wow. I'm liking it a lot. Ooh, you got the, the shiny tool ticket for the, well, the beta access. I mean, that things. could, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> that could be your deliverable. Yeah, we also absolutely. mentioned. Uh, he, here's a little Check secret out, for actually. you. Here's a little secret for you. We also mentioned these lots of these tools in the show, because then what we do is we reach out to these companies. Flow map. I'm looking at you. We reach out to these companies and we say, hey, we just mentioned you in our Facebook live show, and we tag them, and then they usually get in touch and they promote it to their audience, and that's how we grow. Sneaky, it's sneaky. A content joint venture. Mm. There you go. You can have that it's one. One marketing tool for you. Gift mm. for you. All right, so let's uh, let's dive into the main thing we're going to talk about, which is actually selling these discovery workshops. So let's jump in and take a look at the gold nugget. Time to dig into the gold nugget. Uh, before we do that, Connor Dean says, "What is your favourite lamb dish?" Well, um, I can't go past a lamb roast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lamb roast, man, with yep. a bit of mint sauce. Yeah, ridiculously good. 
some roasted sweet potato and pumpkin and so beetroot. I slu- yeah. Oh, oh beetroot. Hey, beetroot. Roast beetroot. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Roast beetroot. Nice. Roast onion. So I sliced up the Half lamb onion. Roast and, garlic cloves. and put full cloves of garlic oh, into the slices. Stop it. Oh, so good. And rosemary sprigs in Butter? there. Butter? Uh, no, I made Ooh. I made gravy out of the leftover as well, oh, and yeah. it was just it was insane. Really? Hey, come um, around sometime. Who, who I will. Is that an invitation? No. <laughs> 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 yeah. Did you just did you just ask me to dinner? <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> did you just ask me to dinner? I no, think Simon just was, asked uh, me to dinner. <laughs> it was lamb curry, lads. Connor, yeah, Connor. you you it can't go past a lamb come rogan, around, Josh. Wasn't hey, for Troy, lamb but, rogan Josh. Wasn't Troy. Lamb rogan Josh. He's Did you notice something? No. Because we're now doing the gold mugget. Mm. Max has brought up a gold light behind us. There you go. So you can yeah. skim through and you can see when we're talking about well, the this thing is you want to talk Max's about. Well, this is Max's idea today was, hey, I think we should colour code the segment so that if mm. someone's watching it on Facebook and they skim through and they see the gold, they know that it's the gold nugget. I did actually see on YouTube, someone was like, um, the show, the real content starts at 2020. You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> about us? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, it In depends on what you call content. I mean, you know, This is all fun. That's the way you want to have it. I should have told you after the show. Sorry yeah, about that, buddy. I know. Gee whiz. Talk about. <laughs> Let's keep the, the, keep the energy the alive. So, selling a <laughs> discovery workshop. Last week we talked about delivering the workshop. Mm. This week we're going to talk about how you actually go about selling this. Because it is a bit of a sticking point. Mm. How you deliver it is one thing, but you know you have to actually get people to sign up mm. before you can deliver anything mm. and then deliver on the promise. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's you right. will. You damn well better. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, when would you do a discovery workshop? So the first thing I want to do is, is cover that. So, you know, it's kind of recapping what we talked about last week. Uh-huh. The client's requests are unclear. Uh, you haven't done what the client wants before as well. So this is something that I see a lot of people get stuck with. Especially when it comes to e-commerce or membership, they're like, well, I'd love to give a proposal on this, but I have no idea how much this is going to cost at all. So how can I get my foot in the door? How can I do something? I'm pretty sure we can deliver success with this client. I like working with them. Project looks like it's going to be profitable. Looks like we're all going to win. But I don't want to give a fixed price right now. So that's when you can sell a paid discovery workshop. Um, it's really when you can't accurately, accurately write the proposal. Uh, also, the requests from the, qui- the client are results driven. Mm. And it's something that you're not like, well, I, I'm not confident that I could deliver you 10,000 email signups in the next 30 days. Uh, we're going to have to get a little bit deeper into how you're going to measure these things and, and, what, it, and what for. Like, you, you need to get a bit deeper into this. Also, positioning for a large proposal. So if there is a big proposal that you want to go for, it's probably pretty likely that other companies are going to go for it as well. You can really get the preferred provider uh, by getting in there and selling the discovery workshop first. Mm. So you don't have to pitch the the big 50K Mm. whatever proposal. You can get in there, get paid. It's probably pretty likely you're going to win the proposal after that. Yeah, there's a couple of things here. Um, Just on that issue, if you're ever (coughs) up against someone else and they're saying, oh, well, you know, such and such agency has told us that they can do this for, you know, whatever, X amount. My argument would be, well, if anyone is telling you at this stage of the game that they can do it for X amount, they're making it up and hoping that they can deliver it profitably, right? It's a guess. Yeah, I don't, we don't have enough information right now to actually give you an accurate proposal. I can give you an inaccurate proposal if you like, but that's not the way that we <laughs> like to do business. And the other reason that you might want to sell a discovery session is if you think the client's going to be a royal pain in the ass. Because during a discovery workshop and a discovery session, you'll understand and you'll get to know how compliant they are with your requests, like getting content in a timely fashion, making decisions, how many decision makers there actually are in the process. And at the end of that process, you might say, you know what, here's your deliverable, all the best, see you later. Mm. I don't want to work with you. Well, it turns out we're, we're all booked up all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, that's right, I've got a full dance card, yeah. sorry. What? Uh, about 11 o'clock, yeah, gotta go, <laughs> see ya. Um, so. Next. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's when you need to uh, types of discovery, as we we're talking about before. There's um, uh, you could do the uh, information architecture. That's mm-hmm. the one I'm looking for there. Mm-hmm. Uh, strategy session, which mm-hmm. is one of the which is what we talked about last week, and kind of the main topic of this um, this sales process as well. But also like a design review as well. There's different types of discovery that you could do, but the main one we really focused on is, is the the strategy session. Um, I've I've found that a lot of um, WordPress consultants, they really think that they're not particularly good at marketing. Uh, They don't know how to position themselves as someone who can deliver marketing results. But going through a strategy session and going through the workbook that we've put together and selling that is a great way to position yourself as someone who can deliver some marketing results for your client, even if you're not really confident with doing that. A lot of the time, the... uh, 
the outcome of redesigning someone's website and recreating it is a marketing benefit. Mm. So even if you don't feel like you are in marketing, you probably are, and you're probably giving some kind of business benefits to your clients. Mm. So just don't think you're not good at marketing because you're probably doing it. Yeah, the web is not an IT function. That's right. Not an IT function. It's a marketing, it's a communications function, Mm. and communications typically falls under marketing. Yeah, yep. So (coughs) some guidelines for selling a discovery workshop. Don't do it for free, because that's not selling a discovery workshop, basically. Mm. So you want to actually get paid for this, right? You're, you're delivering value, mm-hmm. and you're, yeah, your clients are going to get value out of this, so you want to make sure that you are pitching, you are getting paid for this. Um, we were talking last week about a particular kind of um, price point that you usually mm-hmm. go for with mm-hmm. your clients. So a couple of things. If I think that, if I have an idea that maybe this project is going to be worth, I'm going to make some numbers up here. Right? Let's say the project might be worth 20 grand. I'm going to pitch somewhere around the 10 to 15% for the for the discovery workshop. So I'll pitch somewhere to two, two to three grand for a discovery workshop to then map out what this actually looks like. And it's going to be this project and it's this complexity, which I think is going to be about 20 grand. I'll try and get 10 to 15% up front as the discovery workshop. Yep. Or if I'm not interested in working with this client long term and I really don't know and I'm really unsure sure, let's do a half day workshop and I'll just work out what my half day rate is that is profitable. I don't work off an hourly rate. Well, I'm a half a day, it's 50 bucks an hour, you know, $200. I don't work like that because it actually costs our business a lot more than $200 to deliver a half day workshop for a client. So Mm. you've got to work out your numbers in the business and know what your half day or full day rate is. I'm a big fan of doing these workshops for at least half a day, if not a full day. The more time you can spend with the client inside their business, the better opportunity you've got to build that relationship and the more chance that you'll actually get the project if you want it moving moving forward. Yeah. So just with that that 20 grand that you're talking about, Mm. how do you how do you come up with that figure? Well, you know, we typically know that, I mean, so, so first of all, we have minimums. Like we typically know that our projects are somewhere between 15 and 40K. So anything yep. below 15 grand and we're just not going to look at it. Um, anything over 40K and it's kind of getting into a little bit sort of big and enterprise stuff for us and we're not interested in the headaches. So somewhere between 15 and 40 is the sweet spot. Um, you know, e-commerce or any kind of membership stuff is going to be towards the upper end of that. So it could be 30 grand for an e-commerce site. Again, it depends on the complexity. If someone's just selling one digital product, then that's not that complex. Mm. If they've got a whole series of, you know, for example, a jewellery um, store that we worked on where you couldn't actually buy the product, you could just request a quote. So there was some customisation going on. Well, that's going to push the price up a bit as well. So yep. we so have a bit a, of a ballpark. It's a bit of an educated guess on experience. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So it's not educated. like, oh, I know it's going to be 24K. No, no. So no. I'm going <laughs> to price my yeah. workshop at 10% of that, yeah. 20% it's of a, that. It's a, it's a guesstimate. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you kind of work out 10 to 15% of the what you think is going to be that overall project fee and that's what you would pitch the discovery workshop at. The discovery workshop has to be valuable enough that they take it seriously and also valuable and also profitable for you. So, mm. so rule number one is it has to be profitable for you otherwise you're a community service and it has to be um, uh, valuable for them and they have to have enough skin in the game that they take it seriously. Yeah. So you know 50 bucks or 100 bucks for a discovery workshop. <laughs> I, I'm, that's not the game that we're playing. Yeah. So I sell mine for a thousand dollars for the strategy Perfect. workshop. Perfect. So yeah. I, I just got. I was trying to think about how much it should be and like and percentages and all that. And I said, ah, I'm going to take that out of the equation and just do it for a thousand. Perfect. And Perfect. then I can actually come in and pitch that yep. as one of the first things because I know exactly how much it's going to cost. Yep. I know the deliverables. Bang! I can pitch that nice Perfect. and easily. Yep. Yeah. That really helps my sales process as well with that umming, umming and ahhing about how much it's going to cost. And I don't know if you're going to talk about this, but the 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 cost benefit analysis from the client's point of view is if you invest the thousand dollars now we will potentially save you months and thousands of dollars in you know, wayward development and kind of veering off track you know, in, in the future because we're going to have a very, very clear brief and very clear parameters on what this project looks like to bring it to life. And then we can give you an accurate proposal because we know exactly what's involved. Whereas at the moment, we're guessing. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So the, the sales process in, in like the, the high level view looks like this. You need to qualify the client first mm-hmm. and you do that via a uh, project inquiry form, which is something that we actually give to our members as well to be able to qualify clients accurately. Uh, So you've qualified them via form. You need to know things like budget, what are their goals, because you don't want to sell someone a discovery workshop when they have a, you know, they've got a less than $500 budget, or they're not serious about what they're actually building, right? So you need to qualify them first. Mm -hmm. So you get this in, then you want to have a quick uh, phone call with them is what I usually do. I have a quick chat with them just to, to make sure that this is something that is potentially going to be 
um, worthwhile to them because that I, I will get the project inquiry in. You know, their goals aren't particularly clear. I know that it, it seems like a discovery workshop is going to be the next best step. So I'll have a quick call, call with them. I'll just let them know that um, I've received this and thank you for for letting me. Um, thank you for sending through the project inquiry details. Looking at what you've got together here, I can't actually put together an accurate quote for you. So what I'd love to do is to get you in for a discovery workshop mm -hmm. where I will um, take you through um, the strategy that's going to help you create results in your business. We're going to go through why the business exists. It's going to help me get clearer on what's going to um, create success for you. Does that sound like something that would work for you? And then if they say yes, if they show interest, they'll say, great, I'll send you through an email to just recap that, and then we'll take it from there. So it's the Sweet. qualifying, and then the phone call, and then um, the email basically to just recap and, and to sell that. And I've just got that in a template form um, that you can just you can tweak and make your own. So it says, hi client, thanks for reaching out. I've got an introductory service called a discovery workshop that fits perfectly with your needs for a strategy session uh, before we do a comprehensive website proposal. Uh, it includes dialing in on strategy for your website during a two hour Zoom call with our strategy session workbook. So I work with clients all over the world, so <coughs> I do it via Zoom, but half day in person. Mm -hmm. If you can get it done in a half day mm -hmm. and you've got like three people in there, that's mm -hmm. still pushing it as yeah. well. Like yeah, yeah if, if they want to bring their whole crew, it's gonna be a it's gonna be tricky to get it done in a half yeah. day. So you need to know how many people are gonna actually be on board for this. And also that um, <laughs> I remember you saying this, also that Batman's gonna be there. A hundred percent. Yeah. Batman has to be in the room. Batman mm. is the key decision maker. There's no point running this workshop with Robin because then Robin <laughs> has to then go and explain it to Batman, right? Yeah. Or the butler. There's no point having what's his name, the butler? Um, come on, what's the butler's name out of Batman? Alfred, thank you very nice. much. Max, Alfred. Uh, Michael Caine played Alfred, of course. In I was going to Michael Caine, Michael Caine. Yes. Michael Caine yeah. <laughs> famously. Uh, yeah. Some um, people just want there's to see no the point, world burn. Yeah, there's no point having uh, Michael Caine in the room if, if uh, Christian Bale's not there with him, right? Exactly. Because then Michael Caine's just going to go and explain it to Christian Bale. Yeah, he's and never going to do as good a job as you. That's right. As, yeah. Even though he's got a fantastic voice, he's never going to explain <laughs> it the way you can explain it to Christian yeah. Bale. It's not so going to be make your sure passion. It's correct. not going to show the emotional connection. Like I think that's a huge part of sales. That's right. You want to make sure that Batman is in the room. Yeah. Um, now, a um, couple of things. Now, sure. here's the thing. There should be no sticker shock with the price of the Discovery Workshop if, if you've, uh, you've had your client fill in an application form first and they have indicated their budget in that application form mm -hmm. or you have indicated your usual price point. So you could have a separate application form set up for the Discovery Workshop if you've got an application form set up for a full project and they fill that in and they know what your budget bands are, then they, they, there should be no sticker shock when you pitch them a $1,000 discovery workshop, for example. Mm -hmm. The other um, time to sell a discovery workshop is when they can't fill in the project application form because they haven't done the thinking. So you can literally, as we spoke about this last week, by the way, if you want to know how to deliver these strategy workshops, go and have a look at last week's episode of Science is Golden, where we give you the strategy workbook that you can take along and fill in, or you can just <coughs> have them fill in your application form and walk them through how to fill in the application form. You're basically answering the same key questions about their business. Yep. Uh, Vicky has an interesting question here. Do you put the dollars they paid for the workshop toward their final project price? I do. So it's, a, it's a it's a nice carrot to dangle. Yeah, yep. exactly. Absolutely. Yep. So when we do the proposal, then you know the thousand dollars will <coughs> get taken off the proposal. So we just increase the proposal by three thousand dollars. No, no, of course not. <laughs> we take it take it down a thousand dollars because they've already paid for that for the discovery. Yeah, workshop. fatten it up and then give them a discount. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, now, are you giving this away? Of by the way, of course not. Yeah. So this is oh. just the run sheet for this episode, pretty much. But we're going to give this away. Uh, I've got uh, the discovery workshop sales email in there, so you can tweak that and, and uh, change it for your business. Pretty much with everything that we give away here and that with all the different tools and resources that we give, you want to tweak these and, and make them your own. Like as, as Troy says, season it to taste. Because mm. it doesn't, it's not one size fits all. Like there's so many different businesses that we're talking to, so many different types of freelancing, design, development, marketing. There's so much that's involved around the WordPress ecosystem. It's not going to fit for everyone. So mm. take it and take the best parts that work for you and then cut out the rest or add in your own little flavor to make sure it works um, right. for what you need. Season it to taste. Exactly. As my yeah. friend, as my With friend Michael Cunningham says. <laughs> <He> says <laughs> season it. Oh, I don't know if he says that. <laughs> 
Uh, there's a great YouTube video, you should check it out actually, um, of um, the two guys whose names escape me, um, who are excellent Michael Caine impersonators. Oh, right. And they're at a gala event f uh, to honor Michael Caine, and they start off the show. It's, I can't remember the two guys' names, two British comedians, and they start off the show in the stalls impersonating Michael Caine, awesome. and Michael Caine sitting behind them. <laughs> and then he comes in, and, and it's fantastic. It's yeah, gold! Great. It's gold. Check it out. Michael Caine and Christopher Walken, my two favorite. Uh, celebrities that are very well impersonated. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah Christopher Walken's a, he's yeah. a good one to impersonate. He's very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which cool. I won't embarrass you by doing a fantastic Christopher Walken impersonation on the show. Do you? No, I don't. Oh, right. I won't oh, embarrass okay. myself by even right. attempting that okay. at all. So, there you if go. Anyone can do, <coughs> if anyone can do Michael Caine doing again? Christopher Walken, <laughs> Michael Caine impersonating Christopher Walken. Now, I would pay good money to hear that or see that. Impersonation Inception. So if anyone out there watching this now or in three years' time does a good Michael Caine and can do a good Michael Caine doing a good Christopher Walken, hit me up. Mm. Hey? And, I'd and pay you, good you, money for that. You better deliver on the promise. That's right. right. Yeah, no messing um, around. I went to a gig on Friday and... Yeah, sorry, go we're on. just going to go down this path. Go on. Went to a gig on Friday and um, the guy's like, oh, who knows the words for this because my voice is a bit raspy. Uh -huh. You want to come up and sing? And he's like, you got your hand up again? You really failed me last time. You didn't know the words for that one. You sure? Even the rap part? All right, up you get. And then she was just useless. Hopeless. <laughs> Absolutely useless. Hopeless. <sighs> but she um, was up there for the whole song. <clears throat> wow. And he's just like mouthing it, trying to get her to keep going. Courage. So that's how you sell a Discovery Watch show. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone, anything going on there? Oh, no, I, no, I think, are we done here? Is there, we, we need to talk about... Well, of course, there are a couple of, oh. couple of tools that help you get this done. Wow. And, you know, you can't, you can't pick them all as the best ones, but, oh. of course, there's one that shines out among, above the mm. others. Let's talk about it. Get ready for Tool of the Week. <clears throat> That was a that was an elongated sidebar we had down, wasn't <laughs> yeah. it? Hey? Just, I just try to just make sure that Max is out, ready. Backing out of the <laughs> rabbit hole, backing out of the sidebar, back into the main div now, right? Back into the main div. What a what a yeah. nerd. I know. <laughs> See the purple light behind us? Is that purple or blue? I'm colorblind. It's blue, isn't it? Blue? Blue? Blue. It's blue. What do we reckon? It's blue. All right. Blue. Yeah, we'll go with blue. It's tool of the week. It's cool. Blue. So tool of the week is uh is Calendly. So I, I really love Calendly to be able to book in these discovery workshops, yeah. to be able to book in an initial uh, strategy session with the client, a 20 minute discovery call, all sorts of different things. You can set up a, um, a URL, so just calendly.com slash your name or your business name, mm -hmm. and then you can have all your different types of appointments there. You can also have hidden appointments, so you could have your discovery workshop, but you don't want anyone to see that on your public page. It can be at a private URL mm -hmm. and you can send people there. Uh, I use I use a, um, a a different URL to be able to book clients who are international because I have outside of nine to five booking hours for mm. those ones, and I don't yeah. want everyone to book me in at five a.m. because yeah. it sucks, and that's happened, and it was yeah. no good. Now, from a user's <laughs> point of view, I'm actually booking. I'm using Calendly right now to book an appointment with a gentleman named Ryan from Grow.com. There we go. See what I did there? Grow.com. Another excuse to reach out to them um, <laughs> because we are trying desperately to build some meaningful dashboards here in the business oh. to improve the visibility of the company performance across the team so that everybody here and in the States and in the Philippines and in the UK knows exactly where we're at and how we're tracking. Mm. And grow.com have a series of dashboards that we can build. And so I am now using Ryan's Calendly page to book an appointment. And because I'm in Australia, when I visit his page, he's got some Australian time zone appointments set up there that nice. I can book in. So I've booked in an appointment to chat with Ryan next Monday. Ryan from grow.com, looking forward to chatting with you and uh, hopefully you see this live stream at some point. Your and, business um, command center, wow. Yeah. Very, very interested to see what grow.com can do. It's a business intelligence dashboard software tool. Um, and James Murgatroyd on Facebook says the light is purple. I thought it was purple too, but apparently it's blue. So maybe it's the wall and the blue light making it look purple. And we've got some tungsten lights in the back there, so. yeah. There, there we go. go. All right. Well, so I hope Calendly. it's been an enjoyable episode for everyone. Oh, is uh, that it? On done, and Discovery? Yeah, yeah, oh, that's the end. Really? We could definitely keep going, can but just, you know, we, we need to can we, kind of tease a little bit. Can't we do any <laughs> can't we do anything else? Is that really is that it's all of the week's the last thing, isn't it? It is. Wow, okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, what we? on, I know it's your first time on the show, but <laughs> this is how we run it. Right. Okay. <laughs> I just don't want it to stop. I'm a bit like Max. We just don't want it to, f to stop, you know? Well, there's going to be some exciting developments to look forward to. The show will 
There, yeah, there is, know. there is. Uh, we are taking it up a notch. Yeah, mm. um, very exciting. We we'll talk uh, about that for briefly if you want. Well, if you want to just finish on that, I don't think we announce it yet. Well, perfect. That's even oh, better. I just think we just, just tease them. mention it and then stop. Hey, that's a cliffhanger. Um, do we know what's coming up next week? How, are we thought that far ahead? Of course we have. We're just not going to talk about it. Ah, there we go. Next week we have an episode of Science is Golden and it's going to be awesome. Next week it's episode, if officially, it's episode number 19 oh, that's of Silence is Golden. We and did of course it we had 11, a, I think, before yeah, then, didn't we? Is that right? That many? Oh, when maybe. We didn't know, when we didn't know what we were doing. Mm. As opposed to now, where yeah, clearly yeah. we know exactly what we're doing. <laughs> All right, so um, thanks for the cue there, Max. If you like what we're doing, or if you don't like what we're doing, leave us a comment, some feedback, or questions. So I've managed to get this little call to action now in alphabetical order, so I remember it. Comment, feedback, questions, CFQ. Nice. Yeah. So leave us a comment, feedback, or some questions at wpelevation.com slash Facebook, or you can find us on YouTube at wpelevation.com slash YouTube. And of course, if you go to wpelevation.com slash Snapchat, you'll get a 404 page because we don't use Snapchat. Um, there's a dad joke if I've ever heard one. Um, we'll see you again next week on the show. Tell us what you'd like to learn next about running your WordPress consulting business. Uh, we're, we're actually going to have a bit of a session later this afternoon planning out some of these different things that we assume you'd love to learn. But we, we really want to teach, so please let us know. Let us know what it is, and we're going we're gonna to add that into the, uh, into the future planning. Because uh, there's so much that we'd love to talk about and share, but we'd really love to be directed by what, what you'd love to know. Yes, so that's let right. us know. Don't don't feel don't feel shy. Like let us know what your your struggles with and where you're trying to get to, and we'll see what we can do to help you get there. This is your show as much as it is ours. So we uh, absolutely we want to know what it is you want to learn. Connor Dean said, "This is the first time I've stayed up for a live feed. Nice job, lads. Thanks, Connor." And. Uh, Karina Hines, I hope I said your name right. Karina Hines says, I really like how informative your guys' show is. Thanks. Thank you, Karina, for joining in. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week on the show. And remember, knowledge is power. And silence is golden. And I'm Simon Kelly. <laughs> and I'm Troy <laughs> And that is the outro.